Okay, we are on the upper segment of the South Scrimmage Line. Last Stand Hill can be seen up on the ridge. You can see the obelisk up there on the horizon. And right in front of us we have a warrior marker. This is for a black white man, or black wasichu. He is a Minikanju warrior and was mortally wounded in this area while fighting against Custer soldiers that were up on Last Stand Hill. He was taken back to the village and he died either that night or the next day. As I stated in the last segment, there was a bugle call early in the Last Stand Hill episode, and for some unknown reason to the warriors, about 30 to 40 men left the hill and came down into this area. And based on the kill sites, the people that were identified in this area down here, by the survivors of the Reno and Benteen battalions, it is clear that the men that were killed down here were mainly from Company E. So Company E was sent down here for a reason. The reason was pretty simple. The situation up on the hill was bleak. Custer was on the defensive. They had shot their horses and were using them as cover. They were just trying to hold out and they were waiting for Benteen and the recalled units which never came. And Custer was wondering what the heck was going on. So the whole reason for the Company E maneuver down here was to open up a corridor for a couple soldiers that still had horses. So they could ride off to the south and find Benteen, find help, find Reno, and do whatever they could because this was a bad situation here. So Company E, who was without its commander, First Lieutenant Algernon Emery Smith, he was found up on Last Stand Hill, which would suggest that he was killed early in the Last Stand Hill episode. So he was not able to lead his company off the hill. The command of Company E fell to the executive officer, 2nd Lieutenant James Garland Sturgis, who was the son of the actual 7th Cavalry commander, Colonel Samuel Sturgis, who was on detached duty in St. Louis. So Sturgis led Company E down here to open up a corridor for the riders. And they came down in this area and swept the Indians away. But just like the Company C attack in the Calhoun Coulee earlier, the Indians, while they were initially surprised and pushed back, they immediately regrouped and attacked again, and Company E disintegrated. Company E was supposed to come back to the hill, I believe, once they had opened up the corridor, so you would have 100 soldiers back on the hill. Unfortunately, Company E did not return to the hill. After the Indian counterattack, many soldiers simply fled south into the deep ravine sector, perhaps to find some cover, or to escape, or just to hide. So we're going to work our way down the South Scrimmage Line now and look at some of the people that died here. Here are two markers, the first two on the South Scrimmage Line. As you can see, Last Stand Hill is right there. This is a pair of markers and of course one is spurious. This pair is for Private Weston Harrington of Company L. He was found at this spot and identified by people that knew him. So not only did Company E personnel move down here, but others did as well. Remember I told you that at some point, we know 42 men were killed on the hill. But at the same time, you have other soldiers that left the hill on their own volition. You have Sergeant Major William Henry Shero of the headquarters staff. He fled off to the north and was killed there. Other soldiers fled south along Battle Ridge and were killed on the western slope. So Weston Harrington probably wasn't part of the initial charge from Company E off the hill. He probably was one of those that was still alive on the hill later on in the episode and decided to flee because staying on the hill was not a good time at that point. Most people were dead or dying. So we're coming down the South Skirmish Line and as you can see, soldiers that came down here really got into a corridor. You have Indians up on this ridge here to my left. And then to the right, we have Cemetery Ridge. This was the area that Company E was holding during the Cemetery Ridge episode. Well, now the ridge is covered with Indians, and the Indians can easily shoot down on the soldiers. They are just funneling them in here, picking them off one by one as they go. And as you can see, we have some markers here. Here's one soldier dead. And here's a pair of markers here, probably one soldier again, and we will continue to come on down here. It's amazing that more people weren't killed with all the Indians on both sides of them here in this corridor. And here we have three more soldiers killed. 
And here is a subject of controversy. See this little ravine here? That's Cemetery Ravine. And there are a lot of people that say that men actually fled Last Stand Hill and actually died in Cemetery Ravine, which I don't agree with since there is no way to get trapped in there. And soldier testimony sure does not suggest anyone was found in Cemetery Ravine. It isn't deep at all. Survivors always call it a deep ravine or a deep gully. But if you notice, there is Cemetery Ravine. But here is where all the markers are. They are all along this ridge. They aren't going into Cemetery Ravine at all. So I tend to believe that it's Deep Ravine that they are going to, and not Cemetery Ravine. Now here's the marker for 2nd Lieutenant James Garland Sturgis, who was the executive officer of Company E. Now Sturgis was never identified, but it is sure that he was killed somewhere in this sector. It might not be at this point. This is most likely a spurious marker. But he definitely was killed in this area. He was never identified, but his shirt was found in the abandoned Indian village a couple days after the battle, and the shirt was buttoned all the way up. But it was all bloody and stuff, too. That leads me to believe, and others to believe, that most likely he was decapitated, and that would make identification impossible. Also, Sturgis's bloody underclothes were found in the Indian village, so that's just more proof that he was killed. Two other officers in Custer's battalion that weren't identified after the battle were 1st Lieutenant Porter of Company I and 2nd Lieutenant Harrington of Company C. Now, Lieutenant Porter's jacket was found in the abandoned Indian village and it had two bloody bullet holes in it. So that pretty much is proof that he was killed. Lieutenant Harrington's watch was recovered in 1877 when Indians that surrendered to soldiers gave it up. So that was pretty much proof that Harrington had been killed too. We all know that the Indians did loot the dead, the Custer dead, after the battle. They pretty much took everything from the field, including the weapons and clothing. So obviously Harrington did not give up his watch. It was obviously found on his body and was taken by the Indians. As we continue down the South Skirmish Line, we just have marker after marker. And if we swing around here, we have an interesting pair of markers here. This is marker pair 3334, and this is another positive identification of a kill site. This pair is for the scout, Mitch Boyer. Archaeological excavations done at this spot actually found facial bones as well as other bones and other equipment and artifacts. The archaeologists were able to take the facial bones and superimpose them onto a photograph of Mitch Boyer, and it was a perfect positive match. Also, the teeth that were found at the site suggested that the individual was a pipe smoker, which we all know Boyer was. It also gave an age of about 45 to 55 years old, and Boyer was in that age bracket. Lastly, the bones themselves, the racial characteristics, revealed a racially admixed individual with both European and American Indian traits. And there was only one individual in the Custer Battalion that fit that description, and that was Mitch Boyer. Also, clothing found at the site showed that the individual was not wearing a soldier uniform, but that they were wearing a scout or civilian outfit, mother of pearl buttons, things of that nature. So that would definitely be something that Boyer would wear, and not something that a soldier would wear. Meanwhile, if we turn around here, uh, you will see that we are moving down toward Deep Ravine. Deep Ravine is right in front of us and to the right is an area called the Flats. You can see the trees in the background. That is the Little Bighorn River, and the valley of the Little Bighorn is beyond the river. So at this point, we're going to stop and move further down the trail before we start the next segment, which will feature the lower segment of the South Skirmish Line, as well as the fighting in Deep Ravine and the end of the battle. <laughs>